Hello, this is Laura Lee Rose, and I'm here to talk about my top 10 lessons learned from a practice mastermind group. First, let me review our goals for putting together that mastermind, practice mastermind group. We got a group of people and we wanted to clarify our own individual mastermind or group coaching program. We wanted to use this playground to put all the pieces together and then actually practice those pieces so that we can roll out our individual business mastermind programs with some experience behind us. And the ultimate goal was actually to make money off of our individual um, business mastermind group. A review of our commitment. Each of us devoted three months of free leadership to the group. The idea was for each of us to donate our time, expertise, and knowledge base so that we could help each other roll out our individual business mastermind groups. We had a specific and reasonable goal with measurable results, and everyone had the same return on investment. We wanted to eventually roll out our coaching programs and make money with them. So I provided a three months of a mastermind practice playground at no cost to the members and we uh, started this in February but our first meeting was actually March. March, April, and May we met weekly. And uh, the goal was for everybody, everybody to be well on their way to running their mastermind groups in June. And I thought it would be nice to have maybe a scheduled checkup at the end of the year to see how we were doing. So, here's our top 10 lessons learned in my perspective from this experience. Number 10, no progress without deadlines. What happened is within, uh, we had about four members and we still didn't, in my opinion, get a fast-paced momentum going. Uh, we were going week after week. On the 10th week, I decided, well, let's put a deadline. Let's give our presentation of what we were going to do in our individual business mastermind on May 7th. And everyone was to present their, their programs. So my lesson learned from that is always include a show and tell in your mastermind groups as a reasonable forcing function to progress. And then the second lesson learned is um, the mastermind groups should be at least six months in length. I tried this for three months and my mastermind group is going to be a business oriented, goal oriented mastermind group. And from this experience, three months didn't give us much time to actually accomplish our larger goals. So um, my masterminds are going to be at least six months in length and in general going to be one year in length. Number nine. The members in your group are going to devote various levels of commitment. Even if you started off with the idea that everybody signed up for the same level of commitment, not everyone's going to uh, put forth that effort. We had six people to start out with. Two people took full advantage of the opportunities. They did the exercises. They kept up with the goals. They were really serious in trying to accomplish their individual mastermind development and have a rollout in June or July of their individual programs. Two people popped in and out and they didn't seem to review the audios or worksheets that they missed during the weeks that they weren't available. And then two people dropped out completely. And the lesson learned um, from this is to expect the same level of commitment ratios in your individual business mastermind groups. I'm going to hope to get eight to 10 in my mastermind group, but now I know I go in with the expectations that, you know, 33% of the people may drop out, 33% may uh, pop in and out, and 33% may actually meet their goals. With this adjusted expectations, I won't be dissatisfied. Number eight not real items for real life. Even though 
I try very hard to have this mastermind group really in tune with the business perspective, what the people really needed to acquire to roll out their own individual mastermind. And it was uh, really tied to business goals and money. Uh, people didn't seem to relate this to real life and their real needs. Um, for example, you know, after uh, giving them two and a half weeks of a uh, warning on the May 7th, the hot seat, you know, I wanted May 7th to be our hot seat to uh, present and promote our individual mastermind programs. I gave them two and a half weeks notice through a newsletter. I called them uh, a day after the newsletter went out to personally invite them to the May 7th event and to explain them uh, in a you know, about the hot seat and what's expected and, and how to prepare it. And even after doing that, I had a special April 23rd presentation uh, and uh, a prep meeting for the hot seat. And even after reminding all that on May, the week of May 7th, I sent out another reminder that says, hey, please review uh, the April 23rd prep video so that you're uh, aware of what's expected on May 7th in your hot seat presentation and even if I did all of that stuff on uh, May 6th when I called them individually to see if they were going to show up on May 7th I got a response that oh you know I knew that was coming but is that tomorrow so people really don't keep up with the news they don't uh, carve out the time to review the emails to review the newsletters or your Facebook stuff so some people will and some people won't so really keep that in mind and even if you repeat those announcements during your weekly meetings some people don't come to the weekly meetings so um, my takeaway was that sometimes these mastermind group activities are considered something extra that people do outside of their real life so it's not it's not really registering as something really important to accomplish to achieve their personal and professional goals. So just uh, keep that in mind. So a lesson learned from there is regardless how hard you work at communicating your message, there will be people that are not informed. Okay. So number seven, add the personal touch. So this kind of um, piggybacks on the last uh, important point. Like if they're not reading their emails and they're not keeping up with the Facebook or their newsletters and even though you're announcing them the items at the meetings and they're not attending the meetings, it doesn't guarantee that the message is being received. So if it's really important for you to make sure they attend this meeting or to make sure they sign this document or to make sure they uh, do this assignment, go above the call of duty. Give them a call. You know, give that personal touch to emphasize that it's important uh, to accomplish this particular item. Number six, things always take longer than you think. I did an experiment and I asked, uh, at that time we had five people in the group, I asked five people to take a few minutes to electronically sign a simple NDA form. Uh, this accomplished two things. This was a way for me to introduce to the group a new way to have their clients electronically sign any contracts or forms for them so they'll get experience with this new application. At the same time, I wanted to, to uh, show them an NDA form that they can use for their mastermind group. And uh, even if it only took a few minutes and I sent reminders and emails and text them and I left them phone messages. It actually took two weeks for five people to electronically sign that NDA. There was no discussion on any changes. There was no churn on the NDA. They went ahead and signed it uh, with no questions or, or uh, anything like that. But it just took them two weeks to electronically sign it. So um, in my mind, that tells me that even if it seems high priority to you and maybe a high priority item, for you to do that and very beneficial for them to do it. It isn't necessarily high priority for them. So keep that in mind. 
Another lesson learned is if you need signatures on things, get the signatures at payment time and before your first meeting. And that really assures it gets done and doesn't get dragged out. Number five. Use carrots. It kind of piggybacks on the other thing. You know, in this practice mastermind group, we had uh, we requested some homework. We between meetings, we uh, one person even asked people to send her notes to recommend different technical tools and things. That was kind of ignored. Even the person that asked. Uh, for those notes, she said that she was going to collect them and share what she received with the rest of the group, and she didn't even follow through on that commitment. So some of these uh, assignments between meetings just get ignored and forgotten and, and fall through the cracks. So a lesson learned for me is to provide time within the meeting for people to do the work. They may not complete the assignment, but they will have gotten started and got it excited about it and really maybe will be more excited about completing it. And then also when I uh, attached a bonus to the completion of the assignment, the assignments did get meet, met. Uh, people waited until the last day or the last moment to complete it, but it actually got done. So another lesson learned takeaway is that if you are planning to give gifts and bonus offers, um, what I'm going to do is actually attach them to accomplishments and performances and use them as uh, carrots because I want to reward the behavior that I want repeated. I don't want to give a book to everybody in the, mem in the membership if 66% of the people aren't doing the work to... Uh, be successful. Also, you know, hold off on some bonuses and gifts for people that are giving referrals. You know, give them a thank you with that bonus or gift instead of giving everybody the same thing. If somebody's bringing in new people into the fold, are they bringing new people into your mastermind group or uh, suggesting that they uh, have a coaching session with you, give them a gift or a bonus as well. Number four. Don't take it too seriously. Uh, this is important because I know we put all our passion and purpose in our mastermind groups, but we need to realize that are the members in our group, even though they seem passionate at the start, people aren't going to take your mastermind group as seriously as you do. And um, even though you know that, hey, if you could just take a few minutes out of your week to do the work and, and it will really benefit you, it will help you achieve your goals faster, just release from their results because they have their uh, regular, regular life going. You don't know exactly what's going on in their day to day. And uh, the, your mastermind group isn't high priority to them. So lesson learned is, you know, don't bend over backwards for them. Instead, upsell them if, they're, if they can't find the time to do the work in the mastermind group. You know, offer them a one-on-one -on -one coaching session to help them propel them forward faster. You know, offer them a three-hour blitz, um, blitz package or something. You know, upsell them to another program that you have on your list. And then that's another thing is you really want to be prepared and you want to be creating your product funnel so that you can upsell these people. The other thing is, you know, get comfortable with repeating yourself. You know, the message, uh, sometimes it takes people hearing a message seven times before they really get it. So just get comfortable repeating it. You know, maybe you told them several times at the meeting. Maybe you included it in your newsletter. Maybe you put it in your Facebook uh, group pages. Maybe you emailed them regularly. Even if you do all of that stuff, you know, people are going to ask you again. So, you know, relax about it. You know, continue to pre uh, proactively repeat yourself. And then, you know, don't be surprised if they ask you again. Number three, free is not appreciated. Uh, what I mean by this is people don't seem to value free programs. Uh, some of the things that I've learned in the past is that most people that pay the least often expect the most, and most people's efforts 
often match what they monetarily are putting in. So it, it's uh, directly uh, proportional to the amount of skin they have in the game. So free programs don't work for most people because most people don't work the program. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So um, I've experienced this on some of my own free programs, and I know other people have, and this um, practice mastermind is very similar to a free program. So uh, keep that in mind. This lesson learned is to set boundaries from the start, decide what and what you will not do for the individuals of the group, and be very clear up front, you know, be painfully explicit on what you expect from them and what they can expect from you. And then, you know, upsell if they need anything beyond what you're willing to offer them in this mastermind group. This is a group coaching or a group um, mastermind so that the, how do I want to say this, the monetary investment is more economical than a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. So use, you know, think about how much time you're putting in to the mastermind group. Number two, reuse and repackage. So we talked about, hey, even if it's a free mastermind group and people aren't going to typically review your videos or review the past meeting because they're not taking the time in between meetings to devote to some of these mastermind uh, articles, still create them, still record them, still create videos, still create workbooks because you can bundle them into a higher paying program. And you want to use these steps to build your product funnel. So if you need any more assistance or ideas on how to build your product funnel, talk to me. We can uh, set up a three hour uh, get it done blitz, put it all together, and at least you'll have a roadmap for your product funnel. If you know where you want it end up, you can be working all along, you know, just recording this and say, this is going to be in part of my product funnel. So we can get together. If you're interested in doing something like that, we can uh, work it out. A lesson learned from that is just continually keep your ROI in mind, your return on investment in mind, your uh, productization in mind, and your repackaging. Um, once again, these free programs are great if you focus on how to use these free programs to upsell and include in other paid for, paid for bundles. And then the number one lesson learned is do this for yourself. And what I mean by this is keep your higher purpose in mind at all times. Don't just focus on, I'm, I want to help this group of people to achieve their goals. I want them to, to really get the results that they're paying for. Well, if you just focus on that, you're going to get disappointed because we mentioned before at least 66% of this group is either going to drop out or not attend and uh, every week and not meet those goals. And, uh, and I don't want you guys to get disappointed. So continually focus on your higher purpose. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to find excuses not to excel. So you don't want to focus on them. You want to focus on the 33 people that are doing the work themselves that are, are, uh, putting and investing money into you and your higher program, higher paying programs and things like that. So, uh, lesson learned here is use each meeting, interchange, and group coaching event to create your next level of programs. And that could be another uh, mastermind level two. It could be one-on-one -on -one coaching. It could be a certification program. Just keep your mind and focus on the higher purpose. And then be supportive about uh, your current clients, but at the same time, disengage from their results and provide them the tools, but don't take on the responsibility for making them do their work. Some additional bonus tips here. You know, consider including a guest speaker. The reason why it's really a nice idea to in include guest speakers is you can pick a topic that's not only interesting to your current mastermind 
members, but pick a top topic that's actually interested in your target client, your target uh, market, people that are interested in what you have to say or what the topic is about, but not necessarily in your current mastermind group. Then you can open this particular mastermind meeting to everyone that's interested in this topic. And this is, gives you an opportunity to expose your mastermind group to others, get those people, uh, feel the energy of your mastermind group and introduce yourself to those new people. It also provides a win-win for the speaker because now instead of the speaker talking to eight people, eight members of your mastermind group, he may be talking to 20 people now. So he's really uh, excited about that opportunity and you, you've got a good reputation with him now. It's a win for the audience because they're getting some information, some valuable information from the guest speaker that they he, they would not have received otherwise. And of course, it's a win-win for you because the audience, has, your reputation with the audience and the speaker has just uh, jumped a couple of levels. The other thing is always include an upsell strategy in everything that you do. You know, make sure everything that you do leads the client to their next step. And of course, their next step should include a type of program or offering from you. So, uh, and make sure you have that call to action in everything that you do. And that means you need to have something lined up. And that points back to your product funnel. You really want to start building up your product funnel or at least the roadmap to your product funnel. Bonuses. This even when you're giving gifts and bonuses, I would recommend considering, consider to give a gift that actually leads your client to their next step. And uh, for instance, in the practice mastermind to get people to uh, pull together their mastermind presentation on May 7th, I offered a 30 minute interview on Blog Talk Radio just about their program and their mastermind is great exposure for them 30 minutes just about them and it gets placed on the blog talk radio stations which uh, allows them to get exposure to people that they would not ordinarily be exposed to so you know that was a great bonus that not only is a special gift but helps them in their next step in their businesses and then you can show them that just don't stop there. Show them where they can use them. Hey, you can download this interview, this MP3, and you can put it on your website. You can put it on your um, social media pages. You can link it in your newsletters. You can uh, attach a graphics to it and create a video out of it. And you can put it on Pinterest. You can put it on YouTube. And you can go on and on with the different things that they can do with the results of this bonus gift. And this would be great. And they'll say, oh, well, this is great. But, you know, how how do I actually do this? What are the steps to actually uh, put all this stuff on your Facebook and things? And you could say, hey, uh, that's actually what we're going to be talking about in my next boardroom meeting on July 3rd. Or this is the thing that we're going to be talking about in our next level mastermind group. Or, hey, why don't we sign up for a three-hour get-it-done blitz and we can bang it right out at that time. So even use your bonus gifts as a way to upsell something. Client retention. So consider offering, you know, a two for one offer in your mastermind group. I'm doing my business mastermind group and I'm doing a power duo offer where uh, you or the client is uh, invited to include a business partner, a coworker or a family or friend to share their seat, to share their mastermind seat. And that, that's great because it provides a natural accountability partner for this new client. It also introduces a new person to my, my services and my programs. There's another thing is maybe a trial subscription. You know, it, if people have never experienced a mastermind group or a group coaching event, you know, perhaps giving them a trial subscri subscription for a uh, maybe 15 days or 30 days, depending on how long your mastermind group goes for. You know, if it's a year mastermind group, you know, a 30-day free trial is a great a ratio. If it's a six-month endeavor, maybe 15-day 
trial is great. Uh, and then Patricia from our mastermind practice mastermind group suggested this about, you know, she ha in her mastermind group, she's going to allow returning members to come in the second time, the third time around at a discount rate. And I think this is a great idea. You know, it really suggests client loyalty to the new members. They say, hey, this program must be fantastic because this person sitting in this a second time around or a third time around. It also facilitates additional support coaches within the group without taking extra time from you, the person that facilitating the mastermind uh, at a whole. So it doesn't take you extra coaching time or extra training time. It's the people that are already in the group that have gone through the second or third time. They can feel uh, a leadership uh, perspective because they know, they've they gone through this material one time and they can help the newcomers or the new members understand some of these concepts and uh, exercises. At the same time, the, the returning members will get a new perspective from the new people coming in as well. And it just builds client loyalty in the returning clients. Uh, this is Coming to the end of this presentation, the real reason why I put this together at this time is to announce that I will be stepping away from the Practice Mastermind in June. That means uh, May 28th will be my last attendance at the meeting. This doesn't mean that this group needs to shut down. You, uh, the group can continue without me. I've already set up the practice mastermind calendar for people to keep adding meetings to the facebook master practice mastermind is available to all the members so they can continue with that uh, everybody in the group has already facilitated a meeting on their own so they're already experienced with setting up a call on their own and uh, preparing the agenda and doing any uh, follow-up after their meeting so everybody's very experienced in doing that uh, and I feel that I brought a lot to the group, a lot of tools, a lot of experience. So if you would like further help in rolling out your individual business mastermind group, give me a call. We can set up a three hour get it done blitz and just bang it out and get it out. The whole goal for this practice mastermind was to roll out our mastermind, individual masterminds really quickly so that we can start getting some a return on our, our time and effort on this. So if you need some extra help, extra guidance, just give me a call and we can uh, carve out three hours and just get it done. Anyway, it's been a pleasure working with this group and I'll talk to you soon.